Good morning. You getting up? That's a no. Hi. So, we ended up with quite a lot of yarn spare from my last project, which was the Kendall Jenner jumper. And I'm not bothered. I absolutely love the colours, so I'm quite excited to be able to make something else out of them. And I was thinking I wanted to do something crochet this time and something a little bit more snappy and faster at crochet. And I just want something a bit quicker um, that we can just get done in a few days. And that makes me feel nice. <laughs> that it's not gonna be drawn out over like weeks and stuff. Um, so that being said, we are gonna make a granny square cardigan. I made a granny square cardigan last year and I love it and it was really fun to make and I've been wanting to do another granny square cardigan for a while. So this is just the perfect opportunity. Granny squares are super easy and I like that you can just kind of like reel them off. Feels good getting a granny square done even though you have to do so many. But this was the granny square cardigan that I made last year um, but I wanted to do another one that was just a little bit bigger a bit baggier and with the mohair yarn that I've got left over it'll just be super fluffy and cozy and bright and fun so this is what I want to kind of replicate um but I think as you can see these squares there's four rows and just to make it a bit bigger, we're gonna follow the exact same pattern that I did for this, but we're just gonna add an extra row to each one of the granny squares, which will bulk the cardigan out quite a bit. So this is the plan. And the colors I've decided to use are this green, the white, and the pink as well. These are the colours that I've got like most of left um, and I just really like them together. I think they're really fun. Uh, the two, These two are from Wool and the Gang and this one's from Katia Yarns, I think it's called. And we're going to be using a 3.5 milliliter, milliliter? Using a 3.5, a 3.5 millimetre crochet hook. This is quite small for the yarn but I wanted it to be quite tight and compact and less holy so we're going for a smaller hook. I'll insert on screen now a picture of the pattern we're going to use. It's super easy to do and really straightforward and a great like beginner pattern for anyone wanting to create a granny square cardigan. So this is the pattern we're going to use and the pattern that I used last time and we're just going to follow this again but like I said making those granny squares a little bit bigger just to chunk it out a bit. After I played around with some designs on my iPad of like kind of colour schemes and stuff, um, I probably would recommend like making a mock-up of the different colour variations um, that you could do, um, just to be able to pick your favourite instead of just going with the first one, because you could surprise yourself. But because I'm using mohair, it's a pain in the ass to kind of like undo, and I didn't want to waste any of the yarn as, like I have a bit, but I didn't, I didn't know how much this was going to take, so I didn't want to waste any. So I did some mock-ups on my iPad and I came up with this colour variation that I like the most. I wanted the main colours to be the green and the pink and I think the white just adds like just a little, little extra instead of it just being two colours. And yeah, so this is the granny square that we're going for. That's so fluffy. So I'm doing a total of five rows and we are going to need around 83 of these granny squares. So let's get cracking. To start, you're going to take your first colour, make a slip knot. Pull 
and then you're going to chain five. Once you, have, once you have your chain, you're going to make sure it's not twisted. Take the hook into the first chain, yarn over and pull through both loops. Now you have joined your chain to make a circle. You're going to find the middle and just make sure you kind of keep that circle open and then you're going to chain two. And this is going to act as your first double crochet. Now we want to make two more double crochets into the center to make your first cluster of three. So yarn over into the center of the circle, yarn over, pull through, then first through the first two loops and then through the second two loops. And again, yarn over through the middle circle, pull through, pull through the first two loops, then pull through the second two loops. Once we've got our first cluster of three, cro three double crochets, we're going to chain two. This creates a corner and we're going to do another cluster of three double crochets. So yarn over through the center, pull up, yarn over first, through the first two loops and then through the second two loops. Yarn over through the center, through the first two and through the next two. Last one. And there we go. And we're going to repeat this two more times um, as we want to build that square, build the sides and the corners. Now that we've done our last side of our square, we're going to build up that last corner to join them together. So chain two and going through that first stitch and we're going to slip stitch them together like so. And to finish off, yarn over, pull through. And then we can cut our yarn and just pull through that end and tie in. So that's our first part of our granny square. So to join the colours together, we're going to take part of our next yarn and just kind of fold it. You don't want your like end to be too big, but you want enough to be able to um, sew that in at the end. So we're going to put our hook through one of the corners, one of the gaps and pick up and pull through our next colour. Holding both the end and the long bit of yarn together, we're going to yarn over both of them and pull through and then we're going to drop the small end and that'll attach your next colour. Then we're going to yarn over just that long bit and pull through. And that's going to act as, again, as your first double crochet. And like we did in that first round, we want to do a cluster of three. So yarn over, back into that corner, yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over, pull through the last two. And again, And we have our first cluster of three double crochets. Now, because this is in a corner, we want to build up that corner again. So we're going to yarn over like we did the last time, chain two, yarn over, and then we're into our next round of three double crochets. Now we've got to jump to the next corner and the next big hole. So because this isn't a corner, we're not going to chain anything. We're just going to go straight into there with our next double crochet. So yarn over into that corner, pull through, through the next two, through the last two. 
and we're back doing our cluster of three. Now we're in a corner again, so chain two to make that corner and again into the same hole to do your next cluster. Now again we're jumping to the next corner and the next big hole, so this isn't a corner again so we don't want to do any chain stitches going into this one. We just go straight in with our double crochet. There we go. And building up that corner again. You can kind of see how the pattern's going. In the corners we want to do our chain two and add two clusters of double, uh, yeah, two clusters of three double crochets just to build up that corner of that square and then into the last corner just straight in with our double crochets. Chain two to build that corner and into our last double crochet cluster of this round. And to join like we did before, we are just going to pop our stitch, uh, pop our needle <laughs> into the last stitch and pull through to attach. And then again, yarn over, pull through that loop to seal it off. And that's our second round. Then our next hole is this one here to build up the side. So as this isn't a corner, we're not going to chain anything. We're just going to go straight in with our cluster of three double crochets. And then again, we're jumping to that next corner. So we don't need to chain anything straight in with our double crochets. And we're back into a corner, so we want to chain two to build that corner. And back into the same hole with three double crochets again. So we're going to follow that pattern all the way around and I'll meet you back here. Hope that explanation was okay of how we're going to create our granny squares. Um, we're going to follow this exact pattern for another two rows to finish off this square. Hopefully that description was okay. Um, I will link in the description below a better um, tutorial on how to do granny squares, just where so you can see the stitches a little bit better. Mohair isn't the best, you can't really see <laughs> what you're doing. So um, I will link that below, um, which will hopefully help. Now all we need to do is make 80 more of these. And I said this is gonna be a quick project. I would also recommend weaving in all your ends as you go because weaving in the ends of 80 odd granny squares at the end is just going to be ridiculous and it will drive you insane and you won't want to do it. So defo, weave these in and trim them as you go. Honestly, best advice I can give you. Right, let's get comfy and get cracking. I had a few days a couple of weeks ago where I literally just sat here for the full two days and knitted and had a movie marathon and just binged all of the Lord of the Rings extended edition. And it was great. I've been thinking about it a lot recently it was a really good two days and 
I really want to do it again but I feel like it's too soon <laughs> and it's really sad but I loved it it was great so I'm thinking I'm gonna watch The Hobbit now and I don't care who judges Excuse me, that is a doily, not a dishcloth. But it's still a fool. It's a monster. Like that, it's crocheting. All the wonderful game it is too. If you've got the balls for it. <laughs> Good afternoon. So it's day two of this project and I've just got back from work and we're gonna spend the evening making more granny squares. I did actually get a little boo-boo at work today. I don't know if you can see my fingers like quite swollen and like cut on either side. Um, I'm hoping that won't affect my crocheting because that would be devastating. But Rowan, how did you get this horrendous war wound? I hear you ask. Well, let me tell you, I got my finger caught in a bin, in a bin. The weather is horrendous outside and I went to throw a bin bag in the bin and it got caught on a little latch. It was one of those big bins and I went to sprint back in. Little did I know my finger was caught and it literally like yanged me back and was just like hanging off basically. You'll be very glad to know that I can still crochet with my finger. Good morning. So it's been a few days since I spoke to you last. In good news, we have finished all the granny squares and we're now on to just joining them all together. We have had a change of plan on the pattern just because these squares are so big. We're gonna stick to the same amount for the body as I did with my last cardigan, which was about 50. But then for the sleeves, if I did do the same amount as the one I made before, the sleeves are just gonna be so long. So we're just gonna stick to Instead of how many is it? So for these sleeves, I did two rows of four. So we're going to do three instead. And I'm just going to see how we get on. I might still do two, or I might just do three. You know, 
I'm not entirely sure yet. So we're going to see how we get on, which means that the amount of granny squares um, has changed and is not as many. Um, yeah, so that's good news. So I have 62 granny squares and I can always make more if we decide to bulk it out a little bit more as well. So to sew them together, I have gone with a flat slip stitch in the white and then for the border that I'm going to attach like the ribbing to, I've just done single crochet down the side. So this is going to be the front panel like so and then we're going to do ribbing down here. We're going to have obviously the other panel um, and the back piece and we're going to add ribbing down the bottom as well. Um, I'm going to do the ribbing down the bottom like quite tight so it like pulls it in and kind of like balloons it out a little bit just so we can have like we can hitch it up a little bit and it won't be like super long do you know what I mean so yeah so we're going with the flat slip stitch um I will link a video of how to do that down below because I'm definitely not the person to teach you as I learned for this project and I'm still very very slow um, so that's what we're going to basically be cracking on with um, today and tomorrow. bad migraine yesterday and didn't get as much done as I wanted to so please excuse me looking like shit and tired today that is why um but we have the whole day today to crack on on getting these pieces sewn together so hopefully we can get that done today and then work on the ribbing hopefully later today but I don't know if that's wishful thinking and maybe we'll do the ribbing tomorrow <laughs> Or like one of those hood things. Wait. <laughs> How do I look? I thought it was best to probably start wearing my glasses a little bit more for these up close detail-y bits and pretty much whenever I'm crocheting or knitting to be honest it's probably a, a good idea to not strain my eyes and it's probably not helping with the migraines so should wear these more I also wanted to mention that um, I iron slash steam, more steam than iron. Sometimes I'll lightly press on the sides to get them down, but only really briefly. Um, but I'll steam my squares just so they're really nice and flat and you could get a good idea um, before you start sewing them together, like how many you'll kind of need. Um, and also it makes sewing them together like so much easier. Uh, this is the difference. Not ironed slash steamed, steamed.
so I've nearly finished sewing together these pieces for the back panel. Um, I have a total of five rows, just need to sew this last one in. Um, but originally the pattern was going to be six rows, but I have measured it up against the one that I did last time and five rows will make it bigger than that anyway and I think six rows might just be that little bit too much. I think I underestimated how much these extra um, yeah, rows were going to add to it. So I think five will be enough, which makes me very happy because I don't need to do another one. Um, and we're going to just see how that looks. I'm going to um, attach them with some pins, try it on and see how we feel. But I'm thinking this is going to be big enough. So this is now the new and amended pattern. So altogether we needed a final total of 69 squares. Okay, I know I have a jumper on already, but I can't be bothered to take it off. I'm being lazy. So we're going to just put it over the top. And I feel like it'll give us a good indicator anyway. Okay. What do we think? I... Yeah, I'm pretty sure five would be fine. Yeah, and it'll still be baggy because we're going to add ribbing down here and down the bottom. I reckon that'll be fine. Obviously, don't judge the final look on how this looks today because I just look like a grandma. determined to get a majority of this done. We have the body finished and we just need these sleeves on, getting the ribbing sewn in and I just need to, once it's all sewed together, do the ribbing for like the bottom bit. We have our sleeves and this will be folding in half like so and we have the ribbing as well. So for the ribbing, I was actually debating doing it in knit just because I think it looks better, but I found a method in crochet um, which makes it look, the light is a bit shit, but it makes it look a bit more like knit rather than crochet and it's working into the back stitch only, but it's like yarn over and then slip stitch into that back stitch if that makes sense um i'll link a video of how you can do that as well and it just looks a bit more like knit and a little bit better i think than crochet let's get attaching <laughs> got the sleeve sewn on we're going to be sewing down the side and down the bottom of the sleeve to attach them both together i finished the cardigan <laughs> is it colorful I love it. I think it's really cute. It's giving me slightly Christmas vibes, but I don't hate that. It's nearly Christmas, so this can be my new Christmas cardigan, you know? But I think it's cute. 
it just needs some buttons and then it'll be finished i ordered these really cute like pink fabric ones um online and they're coming in like a week and i was like there's no point in putting buttons on just for the sake of like putting buttons on i'd rather put ones on that i like so once the buttons are on it'll be finished but for the time being it's cute <laughs> Remember at the start of this video when I said this was going to be a really snappy, quick project? It wasn't. <laughs> it was actually not, not that long, but it definitely wasn't snappy. Um, but it was worth it. It's cute and it's cosy and kind of Christmassy, which is fine. Well, let me know if you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed watching me make this cardigan and if you're going to give it a go yourself. And if you have any ideas on anything else that we can make together. Thanks for watching. I love you.